Francesco Garapoli, and I welcome you to another installment of Wuji Mountain Musings. Wuji Mountain is our beautiful retreat facility here in North Carolina, outside of Asheville. It's our nonprofit project with the Community Awake organization, and it's a kind of a beautiful dream unfolding, a, a private, small, boutique type of gathering center. I've been working really hard to build it and bring it into being. And thank you to all the donations to help make it possible. And the new book, Chi Effect, that'll be coming out in the summer of 2023, is part of that fundraiser for that project. And at the last chapter of Chi Effect, a beautiful exploration on Chi and life force energy, is a chapter called Wuji Mountain Musings. You know, when you live for years in solitude on a mountaintop, especially in a forest away from a lot of distractions, oh yeah, I should say you have a chance in your Qigong and meditation and yoga practice to go deep and get a, a insight onto things maybe differently than if you were busy going to work every day. Trust me, I work every day. I do a lot of hard work in this maintenance of this forest retreat and managing the Watsu pool and construction. But it's different. It's different when you don't leave the land for maybe a week at a time like I do. So these musings came out of that time. I'm still in it right now as I speak, but at least they've been uh, captured in the book form that will be coming out. And so I'm going to read one as I do. I randomly pick them. This one is number 26. I'm reading it from the ebook version here on my phone. It says, As we do our practice, feel how you are melting into sensation. Keep playing with the release of duality, where no longer are there separate things to even melt together. Surrender into seeing, feeling, body, mind as a unified singularity. Breathe. Interesting. You know, how do you, how do you feel? How do you go into feeling? As Tom Rogers, the president of the Qigong Institute, where I am chair, constantly reminds and does research on, he talks about interoception. We have tons of great research now on interoception. This is interior, interoception like perception, about going in, the practice of listening and feeling at the corporal level, going into that body awareness, listening and observing. This is what Qigong is all about. You know, when, when we look at breath in Qigong, one of the three aspects of Qigong, there's breath. Breath is all about deepening, squeezing your abdominal muscles, exhaling, releasing, going deep into the feeling of the body, inhaling and feeling that oxygen merging with the blood and moving out your arteries, out to the capillaries. This is a feeling. So breath is a feeling. And then there is the movement, right? In Qigong, there is there your posture, your movements, your various forms that you do. This is a feeling. You have to get that feeling, just like with Tai Chi and yoga. What's the feeling of the move? What's the feeling of being in that move? How is that move teaching me through my feeling of it? So that's feeling. That's interoception as well. And the third part of Qigong, and really almost every practice, even if it's not defined that way, in the old Taoist language of, of Mandarin, it was called Yi, Y-I, Yi. This is thought to be thinking or mind, but in fact, the real literal translation of yi is bringing chi to mind. That means using your focus to activate chi. And that has to be a deep feeling to get that. It can't happen in your intellect. Your intellect will sabotage you questioning, is it real chi? Am I really doing it? Am I connected to chi? These are all the things that the intellectual mind do. And it's to give permission to the intellectual mind to rest so we can really feel at the deepest level of our intuitive heart-centered mind. 
when we can start to feel our body on the deepest level, we start to sense the subtle energetics. Now, I will question, and I have questioned, and the whole Chi Effect book is about questioning whether we're really feeling Chi or not. But we are feeling our subtle energetics. We are feeling the Chi effect of activating Chi. And at that subtle energy level, we can start to sense our electromagnetic Wei Chi field in such a way where we know whether it's in alignment or out of alignment. I haven't met anybody in the 40 years of doing this that isn't aware of their body. Even the most unconscious, unaware person can tell you what they feel. Okay, they may not be doing anything about it. They may be seen at a very gross level. They may be complaining about their body, but they are feeling it. So we do all have this ability to one extent or another. Now the question is, are you able to go into that feeling and sensation where you can release that duality of mind, the yi, and body, the physical? Can you even suspend the duality of body and energy? This is a big one. This is going to trigger a lot of people. But once you can start to see where body, energy, and chi dance together and be able to observe through it, you will become more efficient at activating chi. You will understand how to work with your body to repair and rejuvenate and you'll understand how the subtle energy messaging comes from our subconscious. Now, this subconscious isn't a Freudian or Jungian type of subconscious. I'm talking about a deep awareness at the cellular level that is sub below your intellectual mind awareness. How do you access that? Intuitive mind. How do you access intuitive mind? Learn to understand how to connect with your heart resonance. When we can move and navigate out of survival mind and intellectual mind, we start to be able to listen at the intuitive mind level. And that's how we start a relationship at the cellular level with our subconscious. That's truly our messaging that guides most of what we do. Most everybody I've ever met is guided and driven and controlled and sabotaged by their subconscious, but it's not what they think. They think it's subconscious is just an emotional reaction because of what happened when I was a kid, or it's just the emotional knee jerk type of survival reactions that happened because of my acculturation, you know, the culture I have, where I grew up and how I grew up, my parents. This is a thin slice of the definition of subconscious. Most of your subconscious, most of that subconscious messaging that affects us is stored at the epigenetic cellular energetic level. And it has been programmed, conditioned ancestrally through your parental lines, mostly through your maternal lines, your mother's lines. And I can explain that I do it in the book about your mitochondrial DNA. That's extra DNA that's outside of your nucleus. We have a high propensity of influence through the mother line. Once you understand that and learn how to listen to that, listen to it from your intuitive mind. And that's why it takes practice because the world has conditioned us to think with our intellectual mind. You know, it exalts the intellectual mind or through your survival mind because that's our natural survival conditioning. This is tribal programming, ancient. But when you can become a true human, a true evolved, awake individual, you learn to listen with the skills that take you to the transformational level, and that's your intuitive mind. I trust that only the intuitive mind can translate the language of the subconscious. Anything you think you can attempt with your intellectual mind or survival mind will be conditioned by those two minds, which are very limiting, and, and they're bullies. They, they have their own agenda. 
trust me, they're conditioned to have an agenda. And for most of it, it's good for us. But for this work of transcending the agenda, transcending the narrative of a limited materialistic human, they're not going to help you. But when you go to your intuitive mind, you realize you can quiet that inner listening and start to translate the language of your subconscious. And in that translation, you can understand, like any relationship, try having a relationship with somebody who doesn't speak your core spoken language. You're going to have to write things down. You're going to have to use a translator. You're going to have to guess a lot. You're going to misinterpret a lot. This is what happens to our communication at the subconscious level. This is why so many people have illnesses that they can't do anything about. And they go to doctors who don't know anything about those levels of energetics, ancestral energetic epigenetic conditioning for illness that we know is lifestyle-based and emotionally packed. Doctors do a great job. Bless the physicians in the world who work so hard to help, but they're working at a handicap when the patient, the person who's not awake to their subconscious, comes in with their baggage. Imagine if we can work hand in hand with physicians where we contribute to the healing process as much as the physician does. That would be incredible. So I love the medical community. I do a lot of work with physicians around the world and I'm proud of them for what they do. But they work at a handicap because patients come in saying, fix me, I'm broken. And in their beautiful Hippocratic oath, they come in trying to fix what's broken. Because most doctors, most physicians don't know fully about the mind-body connection. When we can understand this mind-body-emotion-spirit connection and then gently release ourselves from the duality that separates and merge it into one energetic, trust me, healing becomes instantaneous. I've seen it over and over and over again. There are myriad stories of people who've had spontaneous healings. Well, many times this will happen just because it's the nature of, of who we are. I mean, that's we're born with this. We're born with this innate ability. But do you want to just play dominoes? Do you want to just play uh, dice with chance? No. We can become proactive in our healing and transformation if we understand how the three minds work. I have a great course at Community Awake on this. We can understand how to activate qi. I go deeply into this in the book and through my qigong teachings. When we understand some of those basic tools, including the third field and the third field relationship you have with every cell in your body, all of a sudden you gain information and access and tools <laughs> that set you apart and bring you into the real life that we're here to live. Sadly, many people go through this body experience without ever getting to that point. And they are trapped in that duality and the antagonistic relationship between mind, emotion, and body. So I share this with you out of love in my heart, out of my experience, the beautiful masters I've studied with, who all had pieces of it. Trust me, not one master ever had this whole story together, but they all helped me come up with these concepts that are not just theories, but I've had thousands of people, thank goodness, that I've been able to take through workshops who have seen changes in their life when they apply these. And it's not instantaneous because we have a lifetime of conditioning to unravel, but it's in you. And trust me, there are so many pathways within each of us that can achieve this transformation. And to speed it up, it's to come to the heart resonance and to be able to trust that when we merge body, mind, and spirit in a singularity and we release ourselves from duality, so much is possible. And I wish that for you. And I thank you for being on this journey and listening. Peace.